Right, you lot. Now, here's a question for you. Who is the worst musician on the planet? Who's the worst artist out there? Now, the correct answer is probably some kid in their mum's basement who's got all the singing skills of a dying cat, but that's not really proper, is it? That's not a very good answer because no one really takes them seriously anyway. The worst artist for me has to be someone that's got some sort of a following. Some people were actually are behind him. Reality is someone... The worst artist no one knows about, so... But for me, although I definitely trap Roddy Radke and Fallen in Reverse as a contender, for me the worst artist on the planet is undoubtedly Tom McDonald. Now, if you don't know who Tom McDonald is, let me give you a quick history lesson. Now, in 2015, he dropped his first album called See You Tomorrow, and he's a white rapper, and that's kind of all you really need to know about him. He's a wannabe Eminem who doesn't have any of the ability, really, of Eminem. When it comes to rhyme schemes and actual clever lyricism, Tom is very basic and typical. He's, anyone could really write the lyrics that Tom does. It's not very... Impressive. A lot of his production and beats, especially in the early days as well, were mediocre and far from the industry standard, although he was always an independent artist and he likes to lean onto that fact a lot. However, Tom realised he needed a way for people to actually care about him because as a musician, as an artist, he's not very good. So he decided to make far right kind of rage bait content, which is basically his main goal is to annoy as many people as possible by stating all of the quotas of the far right and any belief you'd expect him to have he does have although i actually have some respect for tom because i think he's cracked the system in earlier this year he had a hit single with daily wires ben shapiro a man who yes once said that rap is is not music he, he's now on a tom mcdonald song i don't get it in the song they claim they're not talking about money guns and drugs even though in ben shapiro's verse he talks about how he makes money through one pound interest which is, which is quite a funny, kind of ironic thing there. But I do respect Tom, like I've said, because he's found a perfect way to be successful, not being very good at what he does. Because there's certain people who will eat up whatever Tom says, who believe the things that Tom say, and will fall for this propaganda, you could even label it. And it's been done so many times, and every Tom McDonald song is basically the same. You know he's going to mention Trump, you know he's going to mention pronouns, you know he's going to say, oh, I'm not racist, oh, I ain't being white so difficult in 2024. You know you're going to expect that from him. But what I'm going to do today is try and factually prove him wrong, because these people, they, they cling on to the idea that they, they speak the truth, man. We're going to spit the facts. <laughs> we ain't going to care about your feelings. You know, the left, they're so emotional. We talk facts, man. Sorry for the really bad impression, but this is what these people are like. And today what I want to do is factually prove Tom McDonald wrong. Beat him at his own game. For a man made a song called Facts, every bar in his new hit song, I wouldn't really call it a hit, really. I mean, it was, it was trending on YouTube, but anything can be trending on that bloody website. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is go bar from bar in Tom's latest song and... Use actual logic and just common sense to disprove it. With facts, <laughs> as he likes to say. So let's start. Verse 1 and 6 seconds he starts rapping and says, I think the world's gone brain dead. Since when did everybody identify as they, them? Now, one of my funny things about this, right, is that they, the far-right pundits always talk about the virtual signaling in that people do. In schools, are virtual signaling, it's, it's a buzzword that they love to use and they say, oh, we're pointing out these small minorities. But then Tom's first bar, he's going at a tiny minority of people. Now, he says everybody identifies as they, them. 97% of the planet identifies as a man or a woman. Only 3%. I reckon in Tom's lifetime, he might meet less than 10 non-binary people. Just r random, just based off the crowds he hangs out with. So, this is a non-issue, right? There's a lot of things in the world. And as a man with a platform as much as Tom, you'd expect his opening bar to be something a bit more relevant or a bit more... Because non-binary people, for the most part, are harmless. I'm sure there's one or two that have committed crimes, and you'll point that out to fit your narrative, but the reality is they're just like me or you. You know, it's a it's a weird thing to write your head around because it's one of those things where, you know, I've never felt like that, and I have no idea what it feels like to feel like that. So it's hard to get in the shoes of those people, but then it's about tolerance, isn't it? It's about respect, and it's about... They're not doing anything to you, so why is Tom so upset about them? I don't get it. For a man that made a song called Snowflake, he's kind of acting like one at a minute. 
The next two bars cut off all their penises and trade them for some fake breasts. I ain't homophobic. I got gay friends. Now, the first bar is just openly transphobic. Now, if Tom wanted to talk about trans issues and trans debates, I'm not against that. I thought if the issue in sport is one pointed out and one that is a massive agenda and thing and war, and I'm not going to talk about that in this video, but I think it's a... You know, if he was going to go at that angle, or talk about the restroom angle, or one of the actual trans debates that we had, but no, he's just straight up being transphobic for, for no reason other than, ah, oh, get brownie points, because he's got to check you in. His main goal is to just defend the people, and I guess it works, so fair play to him. And then the I'm not homophobic of game friends is, is, is the oldest line in the book, and anyone who's saying that line, right? is homophobic because you're, you're being called out for being homophobic and you're retaliating by saying well I can't be because I've was did the bare minimum to a gay person once upon a time but that doesn't mean you can't both can't be true you can have gay friends and still be homophobic Tom and obviously he's probably trolling with this line and trying to rage bait but I'm taking all these lines factually and seriously I think it's weird that the world's so offended they tell us fat is beautiful they're taking a, a Z pics they wanted to get ripped and they started a pandemic and they really want to win so they rigging the elections. Okay, first point, I'll go backwards with this. The election was not rigged. It was factually proven that Joe Biden beat Trump. Now, you could have an argument about the election process and the way that the election runs. It, for example, in the UK, I think the system's ridiculous and only favours the top two parties. I think it's ridiculously done. Like, how can you get that many votes but because certain areas tactically voted you didn't get as many seats it's, it's an insane system that makes no sense frankly and needs reviewing but biden won the election under the rules and regulations fair and square just because the person you didn't win wanted to win oh i must be rigged because my guy didn't win there's no way that trump uh, have you not thought for a second that trump is unpopular by some that, well, there's many who support him, there's many who are against him. He's one of the most polarising politicians of all time. It's not a far threat to say that not everybody voted for him, Tom. Bloody hell. And they're already saying that the next election's rigged before it's even happened, which is hilarious. Like, they're already ready to call it rigged, and the election hasn't even happened yet. We're months out from it. It's ridiculous. And then the whole pandemic theory. This is conspiracy theory stuff, which is... um. A common right-wing thing. They, they've always got conspiracy. They don't want to believe what the media or the government are telling them. It's a, it's a lie. It's deception. And it could be. But the pandemic was... Well, I think it was exaggerated on a lot of fronts. And I think a lot of the fear-mongering and British television didn't help anyone. But it was a serious disease that killed a lot of people. Tom. I hate to tell you that. <laughs> then the, the fat, beautiful thing. You talk about the body positivity movement. Which... Yes, there are extremists in the body positivity movement, on especially sites like TikTok who are promoting obesity as a positive thing, which you could debate is not a great thing to be showing young kids. However, I think the body positivity movement is more about is beautiful and it's more about it's okay to you shouldn't be down about that you shouldn't let it beat you up and no one's gonna lose weight and most fat people can't lose weight because they're so depressed. So make them be positive, make them feel happy in themselves, and make them want to lose the weight. I feel like that's the, the main point of the body positivity movement, although at times it does go a bit far-fetched, so... <sighs> okay, the next bit is ridiculous. Everyone offended by everything every second, and any time I, that I mention that men can never get pregnant, I get aggressively threatened by kids of 17 genders who think a word is a weapon and want to teach me a lesson. <sighs> okay, there's not 17 genders. Like... I tell you, like, 1% of the planet probably believe that. Like, most people. Biologically, there's three genders, which I think a lot of people tend to ignore. Like, everyone says, oh, there's only two genders. No, you're instantly proven wrong with the existence of intersex people. So whether you believe non-binary or not, there's three genders. And then I think non-binary and gender fluid basically cover everybody else. So I think it's simpler to keep it as five because it does get a bit extreme when... Really, you're, you're saying a bunch of unique genders that pretty much are the same thing. And I think labels, well, good. I think they need to label everything <laughs> now. And it gets it gets complicated. I think, you know, saying non-binary as in you're not a man or woman is, is simple enough. And use whatever pronouns you want. I'm not first. But I think it, it, it works easier, right? But he's it's clearly exaggerating here because no one's aggressively threatening Tom McDonald. And why is he getting threatened by kids? 
That's what he's saying. He gets aggressively threatened by children. Mate, you're a grown adult, and you're saying you're getting threatened by kids who have lots of genders. Now, I think that's your issue, that you're, you're... you're, you're in a position where A, you're hanging around children, and B, you're getting threatened by children. Also, no one has ever said, right, unless you're like mentally ill, no one has said that anyone biologically born male can reproduce and be pregnant, because that, that's not biologically possible. I mean, I don't I don't get Tom's point there, really. He, <laughs> he's wrong. Okay, the next bit's annoying, and it's crazy P. Diddy diddling rappers and hitting women on camera, and conviction ain't gonna happen, Hit, hide the evidence. Instead of putting him in the slammers because he's too rich to be cancelled, we tried to fill the prison cell with the president. Now... The problem with this, right, is he started off really well, and I actually agree with him. I hate the privilege that some celebrities get, that they can do ridiculous, inhumane things and still not go to jail because, oh, they're covered. Prince Andrew, for example, a member of the royal family, is consistently paid protection and people have to pay money for him, even though he's a confirmed paedophile. All evidence points towards it. And what P. Diddy did is absolutely ridiculous and appalling, and he should be in jail, absolutely. And Tom's right that it's a shame that, that people are hiding the evidence and we're not convicting him. But the problem is, he then compares it to Donald Trump's conviction case and said, well, instead of putting P. Diddy in prison, you were trying to arrest Donald Trump. But most people, first of all, right, if you're saying Trump should be arrested, you definitely think P. Diddy should be in, in jail. This ain't a binary thing, you know what I mean? You can't say, ah. Oh, Ah, Trump should be arrested, but that P. Diddy, he's alright what he did, you know what I mean? No. Anyone who's saying P. D- Trump should be arrested also believes P. Diddy should be in jail. It's just Trump has more influence on people because he's in a position of a lot more power than P. Diddy. But also, I'm not comparing what the two did. What P. Diddy did was far worse than what Trump did, but the key word there is that they both broke the law. And anyone who defended Trump, right, in that, was just wrong because he's broken the law and it should be testament. No one should be above the law. The laws are there, they're written, you have to abide by them no matter who you are, no matter where you're from. And if you don't, you get arrested. You go to jail. And Trump and PD should both be arrested. So Trump's failure there is that he had a really good point, but then he compared it to the Trump conviction case. So both cases were very different. And it's ridic- also, he calls Trump the president, which is factually incorrect, because as things stand, Joe Biden is president of the United States, whether you like him or not. You can't just say something is true because you want it to be true. Like, oh, I want Trump to be president. I could say, oh, I want a unicorn, so there's a unicorn in my- behind me right now. But th- there isn't, but I could just say it. Like Trump could win in November, or he could lose, but currently, as things stand, he's not the president. He was the president. But he's not currently the president. Okay, and then the chorus, he says, Born in Canada, moved to USA when you're a racist if you're not gay, which is just... I'm not even going to talk about that line. Then he names a bunch of minorities and basically just says, Everybody needs me. And trust me, no one needs you, Tom. Okay, verse 2. Let's see if it gets any better. Does black lives matter? Or is trans the new black? Every time I rap, I get got them crapping their pants. They have a cardiac arrest like they all had the jab. It's weird. Take a look at your history. You get them free Palestine. Oh, God. Okay, so, this first line really annoys me, and I'm going to explain why. So, he's saying, does Black Lives Matter still, or is trans new black? Now, Black Lives Matter is still a global effort, Tom. Just because you don't see it everywhere, it's still going. The fight against racism is far from over, and it's still prevalent in the world. It's just that trans is a more topical debate, because I'm very much was born a male, identified as a male, right? I have no idea what it's like to be trans. I'm not going to pretend to do, but what I will say, right, is that it must be horrible to live a life as a trans person in 2024 because you're a consistent discussion of political discourse. You're a culture war. You're a debate to be have over your own way of living, which I think is ridiculous in my belief. Trans people, what they... It, the reason that they get so much vocal and there's so many pro-trans protests is because it's such a prevalent issue. We looked at the Olympics, which was an absolute farce. Now, the, the debate of trans women in women's sports is one that is very complicated to explain. My personal viewpoint on it is that it would be a lot easier, obviously, to do it based off sex because that's the fairest way, but then the issue that you run into there is that, well, 
Everyone talks about the trans women, what about trans men? If you're doing it, oh, you've got to do it based on the sex you were born. Well, we've got women who are taking testosterone and are transitioning to men. Surely they have a competitive advantage as well. So then you would say they have to have a unique category. However, the problem with that is that no one would watch, first of all, a trans category. And also, second of all, there's not enough athletes to fill this. And you've still got the idea of biological men fighting biological women or competing against them. So... There isn't a correct answer currently to the trans athlete debate, so that's not what I'm talking about. But more, the the big issue was in the Olympics where it wasn't even a trans person and they just pretended it was to fit their agenda. She was a woman, not a man. She was from Algeria, a country where you can't be transgender, which is what I found funny about the whole case. And she was born a woman, raised a woman, has competed against women, lost in the previous two big events she had when she fought women, including the 2020 Olympics. And then, first, and the reason that they thought she was trans was because of a Russian leak from a Russian testing. The Russians only did this test after a man beat a Russian fighter to try and discredit her, right? Oh, could the Russians have never bloody lied about anything, have they? Oh, God. There's no proof of sex you know a man was born as but all evidence points to her being a woman in my case considering her lifetime as a woman considering where she's born and the fact she's lost against women multiple in fact nine women in a career it was ridiculous so the reason that trans is such a talked about thing it's not the new black tom black light matter is still a massive thing but trans people are constantly talked about because of people like jk rowling or elon musk who constantly villainize trans people especially trans men and make them out to be groomers and make them out to be danger to women which i'm sure a tiny percentage of them could be but most of them are just normal people and it's really a shame anyway sorry i had a massive tangent he then does an anti-vax bar which again what i find funny about right-wing people is that they think they know better than the rest of the world they argue against climate change which he doesn't do in this song tom but he has done in previous songs they say climate change is a hoax they say they don't believe in the vaccines, they don't believe in all this stuff, when all the world's top scientists and all the most intelligent people on the planet are pointing towards one objective and they just don't believe it because I must know better because I'm right, no, you can never be wrong with me and these people think that everything they say has to be correct and if anything doesn't go their way it's it's a fake it's a hoax it's rigged against them the system is forced against them just because they have these but no it's not like that not everyone feels the same way as you do tom <laughs> and then the free palestine thing or i won't do a massive thing on um israel hamas war because i'm not an expert on it but my belief is that what happened on october 7th was one of the most appalling actions to ever happen however how israel retaliated and how they've responded has been a, poor, a mass genocide of killing so many innocent children and women who just wanted to live their lives and weren't part of any of this and aren't Hamas, you know what I mean? They, they're they killing so many people that aren't Hamas soldiers and there needs to be a ceasefire and that, that's my belief and I, I, I don't know why Tom's throwing it in there. I feel like they always talk about virtual signaling than these people as well and ticking boxes, right? They always talk about that, oh, we got to do this for the virtual signaling to appeal to these people but then in the... In this song, he's ticking every box. He's got to mention Palestine. He's got to mention the COVID vaccine. He's got to mention the trans people, BLM. He's got to mention all these things. Okay, the next bit. Look what happened when you free Britney. Your children ain't gay. They've been watching too much Disney. Eminem fans praise Shady, but diss me. Ugh. Okay, so I've already done a video on the whole woke Disney thing. I think it's a bit of a ridiculous argument, to be honest. How is Disney a woke company? I don't get it. Um, Just because they put minorities in the background sometimes in films. Like... It's not a political message, not a political standpoint. Like, it's just showing that the people exist in the world because Disney's such a global company. I, I don't get it. Like, they go as far as say, oh, make it Sam, the new Captain America was woke. Oh, it should have been Bucky. It shouldn't have been Bucky. That guy was the bloody Winter Soldier. Sam was the right choice. How, like, and people are already hating on Captain America. And my problem with this, and people like Neurodronic and Critical Drinker, is that they've gone so far into on the politics that they've forgotten what they're actually doing as critics. And I think, also, I hate this notion that if you brainwash kids of the idea of gay and trans people, that they're going to become that. You can't make someone gay. Trust me, I know that. You, you can't force that. No matter how much you believe. And 
The same people who don't think you should be teaching LGBT stuff in schools also think that you should teach religion in schools. I think both should be taught because I think they're both. It's good to teach kids that these people exist in the world to prepare them as well, preparing people for the future. Tell them that religious people exist. Show them what they believe. Tell them that gay people and trans people exist, and show them what they that's like. And but no, it's a huge thing. It's much more easier to convert someone to religion than it is to convert someone to being gay because you can't do that. You also can't convert it out of them. <laughs> also, the Eminem bar is just a bit pointless, really. Like he's just. He's a weird relationship with Eminem Tom's got. Everybody's so triggered that I just keep getting bigger. They want it more and more of me, like Tom McDonald said, insert N-word here. I just want to know about which rich celebrities kiss kiss, the ethnic listings for existence. I don't want to be nobody other than me. I want to choke the woke until they struggle to breathe. Hollywood is the joke and I'm exposing the creep, like Ellie and Paige and a man if you squat into pee. Can have a transphobic bar there at the end. Um, okay, so... This whole bar is that he's basically trying to defend saying the N-word. And he said the N-word, kid. The whole N-word thing is just really stupid for me because I don't get why anyone gets offended and they can't say it. There's like six words on the planet you can't say. Honestly, open a dictionary, Tom McDonald. There's thousands, if not millions of words, and there's like six that you can't say because they're offensive to people and there's no reason to say them other than to be offensive and you're upset that you've got to do that and you've got to try and defend that. So... He talks about, like, our oh, spreading ideology is under kids when he's promoting transphobia and he's promoting racism now. And then later on he says he's going to choke the woke into this struggle to breathe. Now, this is obviously a joke, right? But this kind of rhetoric is the damaging stuff that you get on both sides, yes. And I think it's a shame that politics get so violent and so out of hand. But to say something like that is just promoting, especially to your to your audience, Tom. You know, the the whole Epstein stuff is fine. Like, fair enough, you want to find out who's there and, yeah, you're exposing creeps in Hollywood, but then you're not really doing that in this song, are you? You spent more time in the song just being racist and transphobic and just saying things that aren't true. If the song was about more the theories and realities of Hollywood, I might respect it a bit more. Okay, then he, report, he repeats that chorus again and he puts in a few more bars. Don't call me a white boy, I identify as black. My pronouns are the ones who didn't use. Now I'm mad, my hunter's got hunting, my hunter's smoking crack. I can't say the R word, so you all are handicapped. Okay, the whole... This is a common thing that right media do, is that they'll, they'll say, oh, if there's no limit to identity, then I'll just say I identify as something ridiculous. And you say, well, that's who I identify, but... It's lunacy. The, the biological and like actual scientific proof that transgender and non-binary are valid identities. Like the scientific proof. There's no scientific proof that you can identify as a different race. I mean, Michael Jackson did, but that was a bit different. That was a skin condition. The pronouns thing is a, is a hilarious thing that is commonly used by these people. And realistically, right, ninety percent, ninety-five percent of trans non-binary people. Are fine if you get your, their pronouns wrong. They'll correct you and they hope that you're respectful and give them back. It, I don't think it should be a hate crime to misgender someone, but it's not polite and it's it's not right, is it, to really do that. But then, the thing about pronouns right is that you don't say them to people's faces. So this doesn't really happen. Like, ah, uh, no one... You don't go up to someone. All you've got to get is someone's name. Like, if I'm speaking to you, Tom, I'm like, all right, Tom, how's your day going? I'm not like... Hello, he, him, how, how are you doing, mate? Like, that's not how it works. So, you're only getting it wrong if you're intentionally doing it behind someone's back. So, you're just being an asshole, really. If you're getting pronouns wrong, you're just intentionally doing it to be an asshole. So, that is my problem with that bar. And that's pretty much it, he repeats the chorus again. And, again, he's saying, oh, I can't say the R word. Oh, no. Yeah, because it, it's got bad connotations. Like... Come on, Tom. So my issue with this song is that he it's not a very good song because he's not got much good rhyme structure. Actually, the song is pretty weak. But also, he doesn't make many good points. And he jumps around. He feels like you've got to tick off every box and say everything. He doesn't really expand enough on his ideas. If he wanted to talk about trans people, he could have done it in a more nuanced, serious take and actually express some of the actual concerns people raise about them. But no, he just goes to transphobia. Same with BLM. Same with any topic, really. The only time he maybe could have added something going there was with the P. Diddy bars, but then he instantly ruins it by comparing it to Trump, which is an equally bad situation, which doesn't 
have anything to do with it. So I've done this video not to say that I politically disagree with Tom because I, I would hope most people who watch me do, but I've done it to more just prove the hypocrisy and to prove that these people say that they speak truth, they say that they speak facts, but it isn't. This wasn't politically driven, this was just me stating the obvious. Like, 97% of the world identify as a man or a woman, for example. That's a fact, that's proven. The election was not rigged. That's a fact, that's proven. You know what I mean? Trump broke the law. That's a fact, that's proven. Like, these are all facts, you know what I mean? These are all things you can't dispute. I've not said anything in this video that's opinionating. And if I have, I've justified that it's an opinion, right? And it's a belief of mine, right? So, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you want to see more of this stuff. I don't want to become, like, critical drinker or neurodronic and just become like, some left-wing critic who only job is to just talk about the politics all the time. But I do think once a time it's important to call out people like Tom. So, I'll see you lot soon.